Hi, this is a short teaser for the Principal Investigator course that we offer as part of the TSAR course, the Translational Scientists and Aging Research here at the CCAT Institute slash the uh, Institute for Translational Research within CCAT. Um, my name is Oliver Connelly, and I want to just briefly introduce to you that course um, it's a course that goes over two days, and there's another one which is a three-day course for advanced management of studies, so to say. But uh, today it's about the two-day course. In German, it's often called the Prüfarzt or Prüfärztin course. But uh, what it's generally about is how to lead a clinical trial and it familiarizes you with all the basics and then with the more, uh, more of the legal framework, etc. So briefly to go through the uh, individual parts, I said two days, uh, so there apparently is quite some info uh, conveyed by that course. And it starts with very basic statistical considerations for the different types of studies, study designs and biometry, as we call it, basics. And uh, so the study designs uh, might be registries or cohorts, but then it goes rather into the direction of uh, of interventional clinical trials um, and, and the others, cohorts, et cetera, registries are actually, uh, usually we use them to pave the way uh, to learn, to understand for the planning purposes of then the interventional trials, right? So observation first and then intervention. Then it's about the legal framework and that has different layers. There is federal there is European regulations, there is some data protection which is regulated in Germany on the state basis. So there are actually 16 different versions then of data protection. I would say they are 98% identical, but it makes sense to know uh, how things are um, being regulated here in North Rhine-Westphalia in Cologne. And then there is European regulation as said, and international guidelines. Um, and, uh, and then there are, for the physicians, uh, there are studies that are regulated not by the respective laws, but by the physician's chamber's rules and statutes. So there are always Q&A parts in these courses that we run. And uh, there is a first Q&A part then on ethics committees, how are they composed and how many are there and which one is, uh, is the one that is responsible for, for your study. And then there are federal regulatory bodies like the Paul Ehrlich Institute and the Beef Farm and you would learn which one is, um, is um, in, in charge depending on the type of study. And there are other bodies that, uh, that will be discussed there. And it's very practical on how to do amendments because often when you run a clinical trial, you learn why you do the study and you learn that some things that you planned in a specific way are not ideal and need some adaptation. So that is what we would call an amendment to a study protocol. And when uh, is any changes or amendments uh, notifiable to the uh, respective authorities or to ethics. Uh, there are some minor things uh, where that is not necessary and others where that is. So you would learn that during the course where that red line is uh, between these two areas. And very important and quite, um, um, quite some time is being spent on that in the course is how to obtain informed consent properly. We do have SOPs for that. So that is very helpful once you plan a study or once you run a study, because there are certain situations that you didn't envision before. Uh, an example would be, I once had a patient uh, and with a diarrheal disease and I wanted to enroll her into a clinical trial, but she was blind and uh, as an underlying condition uh, for decades or so. She was blind and I was, I actually didn't know how to answer that question. I'm not going to give you the answer today, so it'll be in the course uh, whether or not you can enroll this patient into a diarrhea study. And um, then um, further parts are on uh, the ability to consent. That is um, uh, what I just addressed already. 
then specific considerations of minors, unconscious uh, patients, or otherwise limited uh, of li limited legal capacity to uh, to provide informed consent themselves. So there are specific rules and regulations for that, which is very helpful. So we don't we create a clinical trial. We don't need to invent the wheel again because it has all been done already at some, by somebody and and there are these examples and rules. Um, regarding the international uh, regulations, there is the International Conference on Harmonization, and that's the body that produces the GCP, the Good Clinical Practice Guidance, and you may have heard of GCP, and uh, there's GLP and GMP and others, but GCP is the one that is really at the core of clinical trials. Uh, so it defines the tasks and the duties of the investigator, all the investigators, not only the principal lead, but all the other investigators and the team working with the principal investigator and along the lines that the principal investigator um, sets. So as I said, a lot in there. And um, then you want to know and you want to have a plan if while you did your intervention, which might be a tablet or might be something else, um, it can be a wide variety. So when any events after that occur, then you want to know whether they are connected, uh, whether there is a causality uh, with your intervention. And, uh, and for that, you actually um, need some rules as well. So recently and there will be a lot of examples in the course and i recently really came across one that we used as a completely hypothetical it will never happen thing it was a bicycle accident of a study participant after receiving study drug treatment it was some vaccine uh weeks before and and then the big question was is that what's the causality and that is interesting discussions okay so um so you will uh, go through these discussions and you need to go into detail then and really learn about that bicycle accident because whenever you don't know then you would assume that there is a causality to be very cautious that's the general approach but I don't want to go too much into details so other parts of the course then are on documentation on data management and then there are frequently uh, parts in there where things will be repeated and a repetitorium which is important because uh, it's one per day actually important because after the final part which is about quality management quality assurance what are the processes how you do assure quality like corrective action preventive action if something happened or occurred during the study and you think oh that will be good if that will not happen again so uh, you make plans how to avoid it and uh, so you'll be familiarized with the set of standard operating um, um, protocols and um, SOPs that we do have procedures uh, in place here in Cologne and you can easily adapt them to your study so you will be provided with all these documents um, and, and then about monitoring and audits and why and how and what does it mean and who will come and, uh, and how do I prepare for that. There's another repetitorium, that quality block. Um, repetitorium, why? Well, you'll see at the end because there will be a test and a certificate that you obtain and that certificate, you need to have that otherwise you cannot run a clinical trial. Um, so, and then we... What we do, and that is another specific, others maybe too, but we do this in Cologne, are really keen on familiarizing you with clinical trials in practice. That means, for example, how to integrate them into daily routines. And many examples will come from internal medicine, which is good because that is where geriatrics, for example, is. And many, many of the diseases that we deal with and that we try to find better solutions for and actually ideally prevention for uh, in the CCAD labs and uh, facilities. So then there are some organizational parts, how to plan resources, because you need to uh, play with this and plan a, a study and, and learn what others did, because otherwise you might underestimate the 
true volume of workload and resources that you need to run such a study. So it's on organization and management, and that refers to infrastructure, cooperation with partners, partners that are always involved, partners that may be involved depending on the study design. Pharmacy is mostly in it and, uh, and other aspects. So um, the, um, what is really important is that uh, all these other um, um, aspects that I just mentioned, that uh, these um, learning, all uh, these, these parts of the, of the two-day course do then address what are the members of my study team and what does the study team need? Rooms, equipment, what do I do if there are competing studies for the same patient? Uh, that's an issue, but there are ways to, um, to uh, alleviate or to solve that. And then what are the costs? What do I need to um, remember uh, to, to factor into my calculation? Because if, if you want to run a study, you would likely go and apply for funding. And that needs to be rock solid then. And of course, the clinical trial center and the uh, translational platform of CCAD would help you when you have your study idea, you know that you would then just come to or email the uh, clinical study design lab of, uh, of the Institute. So finally, the final part before that exam is practical execution of a study, how to find and enroll patients or healthy volunteers, depending on uh, what you're looking for in your, in your study that you might be planning or studies, ideally it's more than one. And uh, then finally, finally, audits and inspections and other uh, focus on that by the state and what are the consequences? How do you prepare for this? So very from a practical standpoint, what was um, a few hours before uh, discussed more background and theoretical um, audits and et cetera, and then very practical, what did we learn during that? Actually, we do exchange our audit experience with all the other PIs on campus and we collect audit findings because that helps, uh, helps us to always improve and further and further improve. Because the uh, errors and mistakes that were found in one study then should automatically inform all the other studies and uh, not be a finding again in, if there is an audit for some other study, then we already want to be in a better shape than we were last time, so to say. Well, and that is a 30-minute final exam. And as said, a certificate. And that certificate you, you need because you need to submit it to the ethics committee and uh, depending on the study, uh, to either the ethics committee or uh, through the European system. But all that, where to send, which documents, you will definitely know after that course and have your course materials where it would always uh, look this up again and repeat, or contact the uh, clinical study design lab of the um, of our institute. Well, that's the short teaser for the two day course. It's highly recommendable to do the course as soon as possible because then you have that box ticked. You do have that certificate, and uh, and it won't stop you from running a clinical trial once you have a brilliant idea for a study and. Uh, and uh, then you should be in the position that you really uh, are allowed to run it. Okay, that's it for uh, today for this part. And the ZKS or Clinical Trial Center Cologne, that's the guys who have the academy where we run the course. Thank you very much for your attention and good luck and enjoy the course. Bye.